Hi there everyone, my name's Luke and welcome to my channel. I hope that you're having a bit more luck with the weather than I currently am, um, but it's a perfect opportunity for me to record another tutorial today. Um, it's going to be in a similar vein to the ones that I've been doing for Pixie Insight, where I've basically been taking one shot colour and narrow bandeira, which often looks a lot like this, and making it look something a little bit more like this. Um, Today we're not going to be using Pix Insight though, I wanted to make a tutorial available uh, using just free software. And so to that end, today's entire tutorial is going to be performed using Cyril. Um, without any more ado, uh, let's get started. I am going to be making today's data available to you however, uh, just check the video description and it's going to be of the Cygnus wall as you've just seen there and uh, it's a bit of data taken with my Esprit 120. Uh, ASI 2600 MC Pro and an Optolong L Extreme. So uh, let's just get that opened up. 37 10 minute shots and off we go. So when you open it up, you're gonna basically see nothing at all. So you're gonna need to apply a screen stretch. The way how I do this is to click this little box down here and hit histogram. So you can hopefully see here that we've got the red channel selected and that's a lovely clean channel, even with this extreme stretch applied. The green channel uh, is showing, we can, all, uh, we can see a lot of stacking artifacts evident in this channel now. And the blue channel is showing them also. And if you note, you'll see that the green and the blue channel basically contain the exact same amount of data. Uh, only that the blue channel is far, far noisier than the green and that's important for later on in the tutorial because we're effectively going to be discarding this blue um anyhow so let's move on so if you take a look at the rgb view this is going to give you an indication of what you've currently got to work with uh, you can see another problem aside from these stacking artifacts is that there's kind of a strong gradient going from left to right across the image it's uh kind of red on this side and green over on this side so to make any changes to these channels, you're going to need to select one of the color channels first. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and select green. And now I'm going to drag and drop a box over the top of this image just by holding my left mouse button in the, uh, in the preview window here and dragging out an, a green uh, rectangle, as you can see. It doesn't matter if you don't get this exactly perfect, you can resize it, as you can see. And you can also move it before you're done. So in my case, I'm happy with where that is. And I'm just gonna right click, and now I'm gonna crop that image. So now it's gonna to crop to that selection, and we're left with an image showing no stacking artifacts. To deal with that next problem, which is that gradient, I'm gonna use image processing and background extraction. Now you see it's gonna come on with these defaults. If I just hit generate, and apply that's how you use this tool basically in, in in its most simple manner you can see it's not going to do a very good job at all it's basically caused quite a lot of artifacts in some cases it's going to actually get your image perfect i have had that many a time with this just as it is but for this image uh it hasn't done a great great job so it's a perfect opportunity to tell you about the back and forth buttons in Cyril, which are very useful so let's say you did that, you haven't actually mucked the image up, you can just hit back and try again. Now in my case, I'm gonna drop the degree order down to one. This is basically gonna be uh, denoting how um, aggressive it is at chasing down the shape of a gradient. So because this is a very simple gradient, it's just a brightening of red on one side to green on the other, this should be the perfect setting. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply on that. And yeah, I'm pretty satisfied now that that kind of left to right cast is gone and it's looking uh, a lot more normal, I would say. So before we continue now, I'm gonna change this screen stretch to be an auto stretch. This is what we'd see if we'd actually applied a histogram stretch at this point. But obviously this is no use to us at all because it's just basically pure green and nobody wants to see that in their astro images. So to work on this now, I'm gonna to have to do a background um, calibration. So I'm gonna select the green channel as that's gonna let me see most of the image um, in kind of a gray form. And I'm gonna select an area that should just be black. 
so this is this dusty area up here and I'm going to drag open a little box on it just like I did for the crop only much smaller and I'm going to go to image processing and color calibration and if you see if you click the tool there use current selection that's going to tell it about this little box we just made and hit background neutralization so before we uh, progress any further i'll leave this tool open but if you just take a look at the rgb view you can see it's now taking it from being very green to well very red but this is perhaps the way that you're more, more used to seeing these one shot color narrowband images um, now the next thing i want to do is do the the mid-tones balance so again i'm going to select green but i'm going to select an area that represents basically all the colors in the image so uh, i know that if i check the red channel there you can see that this uh, whole area is illuminated with signal um, and also especially here in the in the blue and green channels you can see that that's quite well lit up this little part of the uh, the background gas is in the wall so let's just go ahead and try that use current selection it's going to tell it about this box that we just made again it's the same method of just dragging and dropping a box you see that should do use current selection and hit apply so i'll close this tool check it uh, and you can see now it's basically taking it from being quite red to red along the face where it's very strong in hydrogen data and now kind of a uh, an aqua tealy color uh, in the background here but there's also this green that's become apparent now in the areas which should be quite black um, the way to get rid of this is because it's not really a color you should be seeing in space isn't green is just remove green noise hit apply i'm going to leave everything on defaults just for the sake of this tutorial there's no need to overcomplicate things as it does a fine job just as is and hopefully you can see that's taken it into quite a reasonable state of color calibration so the next thing we're going to want to do is take this image from being in a linear phase to making it non-linear. So to do that, I'm going to open the histogram window. And I'm just going to make use of Siddle's rather good auto stretch. I'll just hit auto stretch there and apply. And now we have a non-linear image to work with that's also being color calibrated. So the next steps towards uh, basically getting what we saw on this uh, this part of the introduction is going to be to extract these channels so you're going to want to set a working directory and basically you do that by selecting this little button that looks like a house here i've currently got it set to this one shot color sho tutorial because that's just going to reduce the amount of clutter on screen that's fine so when i do the next step it's going to drop my r g and b files all in this working directory it's worth checking out where that is before you get started um, so I'm going to go to image processing and extraction and hit that and hit split channels. I'm going to leave the color space as it is on RGB and I'm going to extract red, green and blue. You can name these whatever you'd like, but I'd just like to keep a simple identifier so I know exactly which files I've got. You could go ahead and not actually extract the blue at this point, but just for the sake of completeness, I'm going to do it. And because of it apply, that is now actually done. It looked like nothing happened, but if you see the console, um, you can see that it extracted them and saved three individual FITS files. So the next part of the tutorial is basically going to be waving goodbye to this version of the image and starting on the new version. So to make that new version, we're going to use the RGB compositing tool. So you'd use this usually when you're making um, LRGB images, RGB images, etc., and lining them all up and putting them together. But because we're dealing with one shot color data today, everything's already lined up and registered together, and we can just basically recombine it after that split, no problem. Now, if you remember right back at the start of the tutorial, I said that that red channel in particular was very clean. Um, I'm going to actually want to use that as a luminance. So I'm going to select the channel of red. And I'm going to actually have it shown there in the luminance. I want the red channel itself to be using red. I want the green channel to be using red. This is going to sound a little bit crazy for now, but just uh, bear with me. And finally, in the blue channel, I actually want to use the green channel. 
Again, like I said, we're not using that blue today. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that. Now, if we just take a little look, uh, a touch closer, perhaps using the zoom tool here, um, you can hold onto control and use your mouse to drag around the image. Now, if I change this composition to a CIE LAB composition, you can hopefully see that the background gets quite a bit smoother uh, just by changing this one thing. Hopefully that's apparent for you as I just cycle back through them. Uh, but that's the one that I'm going to be using. By all means, feel free to experiment because that's how uh, <laughs> I learned basically everything. It's just through stumbling upon things, uh, just through experimenting and mostly getting it wrong. But every now and again you get things right. So I'm going to use the CIE LAB composition and just hit close now. That's already all done and waiting for us. Now you can uh, go back to a normal overview by hitting that button. And I guess I should tell you what this one does too. That changes it to a one-to-one -one view. Uh, but anyway, we want this view. You can see now, what have you done, Luke? It looks all wrong. Well, we can get rid of this uh, green cast, again, just by using remove green noise. Just gonna go ahead and hit apply on that. Wait for it to complete. And now hopefully, uh, you can see that there is that kind of golden hubble-ish looking tone there and the background looks a little grey but you can hopefully see a little bit of an hint of blue in there already. So to kind of bring those up a little bit so we can see what we're working with I'm going to use the colour saturation tool. That's going to come on with these defaults but to be honest with you you're probably going to want to drop the background factor right down to zero so it works on every pixel in the image without trying to reject any background uh, data. And I'm just going to drag it right up and let's see what we're working with. So it's made the background kind of a muddy brown, but I'm going to go ahead with that in the knowledge that I'm actually going to perform another color calibration in a moment. And the background calibration should change that back to a more neutral color. So I'll hit apply, wait for that to complete. And now let's go through once more the color calibration. So color calibration, open one of the color channels. Again, I'm just gonna do this on green for the sake of it. This area looks perfect to me. So I'll drag a small box, again with a left mouse button. Use the current selection and hit background neutralization. We can take another look on RGB there. If we just cycle back, you can see it's changed it from that kind of brownish, ruddy tones to one move forward and it's looking at quite a lot more normal, shall we say. I'm gonna try now performing a, a mid-tones again on this using the green. So get all the colors in that I can without too much of the background selected. Use the current selection and apply. You can close the tool because if it's wrong, I can always just go back and continue on anyway. But looking at this, just moving back and forth, I would say it is a step close to being well color calibrated. However, I think there's potentially a little bit of green again. So once more, remove green noise. Yeah, it's subtle, but I think there's been a little change there in the image. Maybe I'm just seeing things. It's uh, quite early in the morning for me now, but um, yeah. So the, the next thing is basically we can uh, change this level of stretch. So. When I used the auto stretch earlier, it really is quite an aggressive stretch. So if I open up the histogram tool there again, you can see how it works. We've got a, a white point slider, which basically I don't think I've ever used uh, in any of my image processing, apart from maybe when I first started out. Um, we've got a black point slider here, which is gonna denote the black point of the image. And a mid-tone slider. If you move this over to the right, it's gonna actually kind of D stretch the histogram a little bit and if you move it to the left it's going to stretch it even further so i'll just reset all of that um hopefully you can see that there's a kind of a sawtooth appearance to this histogram distribution so if i drag this across to the right a little bit maybe not too far you can see it becomes quite a lot smoother and when you see a smooth histogram distribution that's also going to basically always coincide with having a smooth image and because Cyril doesn't have any inbuilt um, noise reduction facilities, not that I know of anyway, maybe you could do a little bit with um, 
Atru wavelets. But um, I actually want to make the image as smooth as possible while it's still in this software and then maybe perform any final um, noise reduction in an, in an external program. But yeah, that looks good to me. A little bit of a, a D stretch and a raise of the black point. You can hopefully see the effect that that's had. If I just apply it for a moment and we cycle back and forth. Yeah, it makes the image look quite a lot more dynamic to me because uh, when it was left like this, it looks a little bit gray and washed out. I would say that this front face of the wall needs bringing to life a little bit. So I'm gonna try and uh, actually touch up just those colors. So to use that, I'm gonna use the color saturation tool again, but this time instead of applying my color uh, calibrations, sorry, saturations globally, I'm gonna actually just select, let's say orange, brown, yellows. A good way to see what colors you're working on, this is a decent tip, is uh, if you just drag it all the way to the left, you'll desaturate whatever you're actually working on and it becomes immediately apparent what's going on. So it looks like I have got the right part of the, uh, the color spectrum selected. If you just drag it up a little. Yeah, I think that's bringing it more to life now. Again, you're probably gonna get sick of seeing me going back and forth on this, but it's always good to just double check that what you've done is actually worked. And in this case, I think it has. Uh, and finally, just to finish off, I'd say maybe a little bit of a uh, contrast boost to that blue. So uh, again, saturation, cyan blue, blue magenta. If I desaturate it, you can see all this area has just now gone to gray. So if I actually push the saturation just a little and hit apply, I'd say we've got a reasonable approximation of a nice bicolor image there, or perhaps leaning slightly towards the Hubble palette sort of appearance. Uh, and it's been done completely in free software. Um, I hope that that's been useful to some of you. Uh, if it has, then please, by all means, leave a comment or tag me on Instagram. Let me, uh, let me see what you did. I love seeing that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, I hope that that's been helpful to you. And hopefully I can get out and start doing the normal image, uh, uh, imaging again soon. But the weather's just been relentless lately. So I hope you're all having a bit more luck with it than I am. Uh, with that said, I look forward to seeing you all next time. And until then, hopefully, guys.